Hello Agents and welcome back to another Division Build video. Today we're back, it's TU10 and a lot of things have had a lot of changes and we're having a look at some new builds and some new opportunities that might have arised with all of the changes. Ongoing Directive has had a bit of a change and I thought I would have a look at that and I've been pleasantly surprised by how good it is. Just to start, just to make a quick note here, my shade level is 1715 so because I'm over a thousand, all of my stats are maxed out on my watch so do pay attention to that if your stats don't line up with my build and this is the build that i've put together now i actually think ongoing directive could be way way better than it actually is now if you can get a piece that rolls with almost max or max weapon damage and almost max or max status effects then you could roll the mod slot to red and I think at this point then if you put red mod slots across the board, this build could be even better. Unfortunately, I've not been able to do that, but I thought I would mention it at the beginning as an option so that you know when you see an ongoing directive drop, what your actual options are. So first of all, I've gone with Survivalist as my specialisation and I will go over here and show you why. So speaking to the damage that you're using, I'm going to be using a rifle and I'm going to be using an LMG. We get the fire grenade, which is pretty important to this build as well. We're not so fussed about the outgoing healing. 10% increased protection from elites is nice. And armor kits, no repair over 5 seconds instead of instantly, but they also apply to group members, which is a nice additional buff as well. When in cover, we gain 10% skill haste and we're using skills, so all helps. We gain 5 ammo per second for the current weapon while performing cover to cover. So if you get desperate for ammo, that's great. But then Survivalist Tactical Link is really good. Group members gain 10% bonus damage to targets with status effects. And they're always going to be bleeding. So everything's gaining an extra 10% bonus damage to targets from all your other team members, which is really nice. The guns that we're using, I would go with an M1A. If I had the opportunity, the opportunity to, I would go with an M1A, a classic M1A. But I haven't got a good one, so I'm going with a military mark 16, uh, 17 instead. Uh, as good as stats as possible. Third attribute, you always want to be damaged to target out of cover, but you want sadist on the talent. So we deal 20% weapon damage to bleeding enemies. After four kills, apply bleed to the next enemy you hit. Or if you wanted to, you could use the named weapon, the Carnage, which is perfect, which gives you 25% damage to bleeding enemies, but it actually reapplies it after three kills. And that's not necessarily the be all and end all. Uh, it's the, the weapon damage that we're after. Everything's bleeding all of the time because of how ongoing directive works now anyway. So first of all, we'll go over the gear set. So two pieces gives us 15% status effects, three pieces gives us 30% reload speed, and four pieces gives us rules of engagement. Killing a status affected enemy grants hollow point ammo for your active weapon. Hollow point ammo amplifies your weapon damage by 20% and applies bleed on hit. Which is really, really, really good. Uh, I'm running the chest and the backpack, so if we have a quick look at the chest talent, it increases the hollow point ammo weapon damage to 35% and it's amplification, so it's amplified damage at 35%, which is really, really high. If you look at glass cannon, uh, glass cannon only gives us 25% and if we look at perfect glass cannon, it only gives us 30% and we're not having to take the 60% incoming risk. So it's really, really high this damage on this talent. If we have a quick look at the backpack talent, Trauma Specialist increases the duration of your bleed status effect from 50% and all your bleed damage done by 100%. So we get a nice tick on the bleed as well. What you can see what I've done here, I've gone for weapon damage, status effects, and then I put in skill haste mods. Now, as I said right at the beginning of the video, if you can get an ongoing directive piece that comes with good weapon damage, good status effects, I would roll the mod to a red mod slot and go for crit chance in the instead. 
for some extra damage. Because we've got weapon damage as our core attribute across the board, we hit really hard with our guns as well. Which is why I mentioned about using an M1A, or perhaps keeping the Carnage as your main weapon as an LMG. So if you could do that, you could be even stronger. Chest, you can see I've got weapon damage, status effects and skill haste. Backpack, weapon damage, status effects and skill haste and I could do 5% better here on the weapon damage attribute. And then on my holster, weapon damage, status effects where I could have slightly better increase here as well. You have to, for ongoing directive you have to farm the green targeted loot area as well. There's no other way of getting it unfortunately you can't craft it so it's pretty tough to come by because that loot pool is so big now. Especially with all the new gear as well. And this is where my build's a little bit different. I've gone with contractor's gloves, weapon damage, damage to armor, which is multiplicative damage, and I've rolled status effects on. Gives me 10% LMG damage as well for using my carnage. And then with the Fox's Prayer, you can see it gives me 10% rifle damage for my rifle, 15% weapon damage, 8% damage to targets out of cover, and 10% status effects. I can show you some quick numbers here and I'll put some gameplay at the end as well in a team and also solo. The great thing about being in a team, if you have someone running a CC build as well or setting people on fire, which it'll show in my footage, I just randomly had a guy setting things on fire. I didn't really have to worry about bleeding things at that point. I could just shoot and I would constantly have the hollow point ammo in my gun because now it goes straight into your gun. You don't have to pick it up like you used to. Everything's bleeding. And as you can see, I got 126 hollow point ammo. Everything's still bleeding away for 9,606. And the minute you shoot them, all of a sudden you see they're all dying much, much quicker. If my aim was a little bit better to them headshots. But then you can switch guns as well. Finish them off with another gun and get hollow point ammo for that gun then as well. And it's really really good at this point you'll notice that they bleed all the time don't really have to worry with my skills anymore because the hollow point ammo is just consistently refreshed because of how much weapon damage you're doing you're easily killing enemies so you don't really have to be reliant anymore on your skills and you can flip between guns as well and make sure they both consistently have the hollow points as well depending on what kind of Enemies you're killing. I prefer using a rifle, I'm not very good with an LMG. But I would love an M1A in this situation. So yeah, it's really really good. If you do need extra, you could go with a fire grenade. As you can see, I'm using the Stinger Hive. Mod it up for big distance and as much as you can. Whatever mods you've got, you've got so we've got nothing in the skills for this. We've no yellows in here, so it's not making it any better. Uh, so just put whatever mods you've got in and you can also use a jammer pulse that counts as a status effect uh, so what i was thinking was if i was in a particular risky mission or maybe a legendary and i wanted to run run reviver hive you could run the jammer pulse to get the initial kill to get your hollow point ammo and then keep the reviver hive on as well but there's can there's a few different ways you can run it and a few different options you can do there let me know what you think guys in the comments down below let me know if you've experimented with it the damage output seems really really good and i'm i am wondering about maybe if i could switch one of these out maybe switch out the contractor's gloves uh, and then go with a backpack that would spread the bleed instead which would be creeping death i think if off the top of my head yeah go with something like creeping death instead uh, but I don't think that uh, that 9,000 a tick on the bleed damage would be worth it and would be worth the spread. The good thing though about having the Stinger Hive is when it hits the enemies it makes them go crazy and uh, dodge out of cover and things like that. So it leaves you plenty of opportunity to mow them down. One thing I did notice and I will show you quickly here now if I get these bleeding again.
So you can see now from the bleed, if I cancel the hive, it's already cancelled. So you can see now they're doing 91,435, which is really, really good. But if I switch to the new gear set in here, the Eclipse Protocol, two piece of Eclipse Protocol is going to give me 15% extra status effects. So I rolled the attribute to 10% that would match my status effects on my contractor's gloves. And then if I did the same on the knee pads, rolled the attribute to 10%, essentially I'm getting an extra 15% status effects into this build, which you would think could make it better. But if I hit something now, you can see I'm actually doing less, I'm actually doing 8 85.5k instead of the 90k I was doing before which is a little bit strange to me uh, I'm not sure why I've not investigated this too much it either says to me that the two piece isn't working correctly or contractors gloves the attribute the damage to armor on the is actually contributing to the status effect damage or maybe the damage to target out of cover if you know guys please do comment in the comments down below and let us all know I've not investigated that that far but I wouldn't go for that anyway I don't think the 15% status effect bonus is going to outdo the huge you know 15% uh, weapon damage from each of these pieces plus the two sets of multiplicative damage the damage to armor and the damage to target out of cover there's no way we want to replace them it's not a status effect build it's an all red build we want to be doing damage with our guns the bleed is just a nice side effect to this to this build and without having to run something like glass cannon and have so much incoming damage as well we want to be able to output as close as possible to that kind of damage without the risk let me know what you think in the comments down below uh, come and see me live over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash DJ Tickle, where you'll see me streaming most days, doing raid help, doing anything division related, and soon the new raid on the 30th. Hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up so you get notifications when I upload new videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye. up on Dragov's outer perimeter. Remember, you're only here for Dragov, but if you find his supply depot, raid it. Denying Dragov that stockpile will also deny Keener crucial support. Get that shit Be inside. careful. I still don't like the idea of throwing you to the wolves, no matter how much we want Dragov for his role in the city hall attack. Yeah, man.
Medical assistance needed. Yeah. 